So this is the help seeking tool and just a reminder of who's involved in it in the healthcare cluster, um, its leads and the NHS and in this tool we're particularly working with Picton Medical Centre. Um, and there are three, in terms of putting it in a context of why it's needed, there are three networks that we're working with. Uh, there's Practice Managers Network. This links together, I think it's about 23 different GP practices in this region. Uh, each practice has one practice manager. It's a well-established network. They've existed for about, uh, well, over 12 years. Uh, they've existed throughout different reorganizations of the NHS, so they're very stable. Um, they meet monthly on face-to-face -face and they use email a lot for communication but this doesn't work brilliantly for them. They're sharing questions and answers in email but this is getting lost. They'd like a way of sharing this knowledge and expertise uh, more effectively um, and they actually want to use the tool as well as a way of strengthening their voice in the region. Um, there's also a group of people called Data Quality Leads uh, these exist in uh, most of the GP practices. Not every GP practice has one of these people. Again, there's only going to be one in each practice. Um, they don't know who else exists across the group. So they, at the moment, don't have any way at all of communicating between the practices. Those data quality leads that we've met say they would really value having a network set up that's similar to the practice managers to share their expertise. Um, then there's the nurses. These GP practices in this region are pretty small and often they'll have only one or two nurses in each practice. So again you've got a problem where they haven't got many people within the practice that they can talk to about uh, common problems they come across. Uh, they have actually, late last year, they set up a nurses network um, which tries to have monthly meetings in which they come to meet face to face. But as you can imagine, if a GP practice only has one nurse, then letting them go off for the afternoon to attend a face to face meeting is pretty hard. So they don't have very good attendance at those meetings. And what they would like is, uh, again, a technology tool that will help them to um, share questions and support uh, without the need to go to face-to-face -face meetings as often. Um, okay, so we've been working with these uh, three groups. We've run so far two co-design workshops. Uh, the first one was to, we, we got the practice managers and data quality leads together in the morning and the nurses in the afternoon, and we showed them LinkedIn as a way of getting them to understand what a networking tool could do and uh, how, how it uh, gives, would give them access not only to uh, local experts in their area but also nationally. Uh, and on workshop two we had a version of Help Seeking which Dirk will uh, demonstrate in a minute, uh, which we showed them, got them started in using it and they're currently trying to use it uh, in their daily lives and we will be going back to see them in September to find out more about how they got on. I will hand over to Debbie who might want to say some more about the co-design. So what we did was we've actually started to, to look at the empirical data that we collected in year one and we used the lens of Vygotsky to try and explore how we could scaffold the learning in the workplace and capture the informal learning. So what we kind of tried to do, we we'll tried to make sense of the information from the context of the practices and the way in which they, the way in which they work. And so we did a cross-case analysis with some different practices and the kind of three main themes that emerged is that the time and space to reflect and discuss their experiences is being currently marginalised because they're small practices, because the NHS is changing the way in which they commission, and there's a lot of change going on, and so they're really finding they don't have the space. Um, practice managers and nurses, they both want to learn from their more experienced peers. 
So if you're a new practice nurse and there's only one other nurse in the practice and you're a diabetic specialist, the other nurse may not be. So they're looking for other people that they can link up and they can have conversations with. Um, when we actually tried to get them to articulate what they wanted, our best kind of interpretation of that is what they're wanting is like a personal learning network, something that's personal to them, but also that would go outwards and they could contact very local people, but also very national people as well. So that was quite interesting. And then some of the features that we, we came up with was these di dynamic alerts, which is kind of, you know, tagging and those sorts of ideas. And also some sort of recommendation system. Will this, does this help you, that kind of answer? And those kinds of things is where we think it's going to link in with the social semantic server. So One this... Minute. Yep, we're nearly there. So you can see that's kind of the model. And I was just going to say, that's what it actually that's what it looks like. Yeah, it's hard to do it now in one minute, so yeah. I will just summarize a bit. About the features. Yeah, we have using simply WordPress and BuddyPress because that was suiting a lot of, a lot of dimensions what our approach of requirements and so on. It's very flexible, has a big community behind, and we found a very good plugin uh, which we want to further develop, which is question and answer tool, which is exactly what we call help seeking, so that people can talk to each other, raising questions, asking questions, and getting answers from the others. Any question can be tagged, categorized. Obviously, it needs, uh, using categories and tags in a good way, you need a lot of questions, despite but it, the growing amount of questions coming. And uh, you see a bit like the social network activity, you see the social network feature, you have members, you see them, you can make friendships with them, so we have a different kind of connection. We reduced it in the moment to some basic features, we have later the opportunity to use groups again, which is a very useful tool if you have more people in the community. You get the starting page, so we have some principal information available. And you see always the recent questions, recent discussions, because we use the forum in the moment uh, extra to the <coughs> questions, because forums and questions are a bit different thing. And we're having home, the community that is yeah. telling the, uh, the giving access to forum and groups later, if we would have it there. Ask questions is obviously the ask question and see questions, then you could see all questions other people having. We're having a system internally give you a notification about new questions uh, were raised by people. And uh, we call it new, what is the main blogging, also what is used, maybe important for people to know about the site, like the workshop presentation available then on the site. The whole site is uh, on demand. Uh, we have another page uh, that is for the nurses, and we have the other site for, uh, uh, where we have the, I think, on the left, not for the nurses, that's the other one. We have two sites, and both are behind the login. So people can't, nobody else sees it, you have to log in. That will be further customized and uh, I will show it, but we're running out of time. And then the very final thing is Not to say after we did the second workshop, Tamsin emailed us all because we actually had a nurse started to use it, so we were really pleased. Thank you, Tobias. Yeah. Great. The, the theme we're using is uh, responsive. So when you use it as a, on a smartphone, you see it in a proper way. Instead of three columns, you have just one column in the middle. It's uh, very similar to. Uh, what we want to, uh, what we will do on the mobile.net.